So this video is for AQA business studies and what I'm going to be focusing on is the manipulation of data. So often you'll get a case study with financial data and uh, sometimes the questions won't ask you for anything specific. What they'll ask you is just simply uh, analyse the financial performance of the company. So this is from um, the 2017 uh, paper one for AS business studies and it's based on an adventure camp. And they've got two options in terms of expansion, but we can see that in table one, they have uh, financial data. So if you have a look at the financial data, there's receivables, there's payables, they've got an overdraft amount, there's debt, there's total long-term funds invested into the company, there's their average contribution per customer in 2016, there's a total number of customers, fixed costs and interest rates on the existing loan. So they have all this financial data for you and the question asks you to use Table 1 to analyse the weakness of AC LTD's financial position on 31st of December 2016. Now, what I've noticed with uh, one of my classes is that many of the students just simply wanted to use the data that was there, and they didn't want to manipulate the data and use the data to find out new calculations. So they were happy just to, for example, look at the receivables and the payable days, and that is it. But then they struggled for that second point. And as we said before, a nine market, I would recommend using two points. Now, some of them went into the fact that the overdraft is quite high and so on, but what we need to do is we need to think about the calculations that we've learned throughout uh, the two years, or even in the first year. I mean, this one is based on AS, but it, it, this could have easily been an A2 question with more, with more data in, uh, allowing you to use the formulas uh, from a, AS and A2 to calculate. So what you need to do is you need to think about, well, from this data, what can I actually calculate? What different formulas could I use? The fact that they give you the average contribution per customer and they also give you the total number of customers, first of all, you could calculate the total contribution. They've also given you the fixed cost, so, so you could actually calculate the profit levels as well from that. They've told you um, the, the total long-term funds which have been invested into the business, but they also give you the debt, so we can use these two okay, to give us a bit of an idea. Similar to gearing, it gives an idea of how much debt uh, is actually being, uh, sorry, the percentage of their long-term funds is actually from debt. So there's certain calculations that we can we can carry out. We can even have a look at, for example, the fixed cost with the contribution and calculate break-even. So there's lots of different uh, calculations that we can carry out. But what's really also essential, which many students um, overlook, is actually what is the, what were the uh, the objectives of this company? What were they uh, in in this year? What they set out to do? So as we can see, for the first year, Sam set two financial targets. So this is a really good indication as to whether they are financially weak or not. So if they're not achieving these targets, then obviously it shows problems. So the so first one, to break even, so we can, we can calculate that. And also to keep a short-term borrowing from the banks under 25,000. His mission is to create a number of adventure camps across the UK in the next few years. So we can use this information, we can use the data in Table 1 and to, uh, I suppose, create... Uh, a, an answer which has very high levels of context. Because remember, if you're manipulating the data and you're carrying out calculations that maybe the examiner's not asking you to do, but you can see it within the data, then that will definitely get you the high levels of application. So as I've, as I've put here, just to emphasize, to get the high level marks, you need to manipulate the data in table one. This can include total contribution, profit, break even, and debts as a proportion of long-term funding. It's also important to consider what their objectives are, which is to break even and keep short-term borrowing from the bank below 25,000. Now, if you're a bit unsure on the, um, again, the calculations from AS, there are videos on the YouTube channel which helps you and goes through every single one in terms of what they mean as well. But what I've done for you is I've, I've carried out these calculations and I've written a model paragraph. So the calculations I've made, I've, I've worked out my total contribution, which is the contribution of £25 times the, by uh, the, uh, the output uh, of people is £8,000. So that gave me the total contribution of uh, £200,000. To work out my profit, I just had to minus my fixed cost from uh, that amount, which was 207000 and that gave me a loss of 7000 So straight away from calculating that profit, I know they have not broken even, so they have not achieved that target. 
Now, to calculate how much, or uh, in terms of how many products they had to, or how many tickets, or whatever it might be, people they had to get through to break even, you simply get your fixed cost of 207,000 divided by the, con the, the contribution, which is 25 pounds, and that will give you 8,280 units. Now, the fact is, they've only had 8,000 customers this year, so therefore, 280 uh, customers short. Okay, so in, in terms of my paragraph, I put when considering table one, we can calculate that AC Limited are making a loss of seven thousand pounds and require a further two hundred and eighty units. It probably should I should probably say two hundred and eighty people to break even. Therefore, they have had a poor financial year in two thousand and sixteen and not met the target of break even. So emphasize that because the question was asking you about the financial weaknesses. So in order to improve this, the business requires higher sales volume and therefore must focus on why they were able to attract the amount of customers needed. Or they may look at uh, look to renegotiate the cost as either their fixed cost or variable costs are currently too high. So by manipulating the data, I can definitely say they have not met that objective. And again, by manipulating the data, by considering the context of the objective, you're going to get the high level marks. Now, for a nine mark, I'd recommend uh, two paragraphs, uh, sorry, two main points. So my second point is going to be in terms of debts. And remember, that is the second objective. So debts is a proportion of long-term funding. So what I've done is I've worked out, I mean, this is obviously based on the long term and their objective is based on the short term, but there's no harm in using that as well to just back up uh, the point. So I've worked it out of 100,000 divided by 150,000 times by 100 would give me 67.67%. So they are very reliant on, um, on credit uh, from the bank in, in order to fund this expansion. Now, also I've worked out the, uh, the interest rate on this. So, yeah, so if we consider the um, the sixty six point six seven percent, that is it's risky because if there's any changes in the interest rate, then obviously it's going to increase their their outflows and it's going to add to further cost. And we can see at the moment they're already paying out five thousand five hundred per annum based on that uh, on that debt of an interest rate of five point five percent as it gives you. Not only that, but they're actually. Um, the VAT, they're at an overdraft of 35,000, even the the target was 25,000. So again, the paragraph I've written is uh, their debts as a proportion of long-term funding is quite high at 66.67%. This suggests that they're quite dependent on borrowing credit to expand their operations. This can increase risk to the company as if interest rates uh, were to increase, this uh, may increase the debt as repayments would increase. Interest pay payments are already at 5,500 per annum and therefore this would further increase. This also relates to their short-term borrowing as currently their overdraft exceeds their target by 10,000 pounds. Again, adding to this risk, but also not achieving yet another target. So again, really emphasizing the weakness of their financial performance by not achieving either of the targets that were set. Now, many of my students went for uh, this point. Uh, remember, you only need two, but I, I have put this third point in just, just to kind of uh, tell you why maybe this isn't as good as the other two points that I've made. It, it does get you context, but it, there's no manipulation of data. You're just simply having a look at what it says in the table. And yes, the math scheme does acknowledge it, but um, I suppose you're not really including the high levels of context that the examiner really wants from. Uh, I, I, if you think about it from this point of view as well, you're competing with um, every single student who's sitting in this paper. Now, the students who know the formulas and the students who manipulate the data are probably going to stand out in comparison to the ones who just use the table and use the figures already in the table. But you could use the fact that the payables is uh, 21 days whilst receivables uh, in 90 days. So as I've put here, the firm also has issues with its trade credits. Currently, there is a significant difference between the amounts of time they receive payment from their customers to the amount of time they are granted to pay suppliers. There is a 69-day period which they await payment, which is going to hurt their cash flow, as their net cash flow is, is going to be pressured by the delay of inflows. The business must renegotiate this period of time with customers and suppliers to avoid such a time difference. Still a valid point, still well developed, but I just don't think it's quite there in terms of the high levels of context that will really make you stand out.